Stephen. Andrew. Fancy spending another quiet night inside number nine? Always. <laughs> So we're back to the the main uh, episodes again. Back to the main after, thread. I mean, it feels like a little while since we've done a proper episode yeah. like this. Finding time to sit down and watch the episode multiple times this week has felt very strange because it's yeah. been a, yeah. Revisiting an old habit. Yeah, and also doing it normally and not immersing myself in it like I did with Deadline for an entire week. <laughs> true. Yeah, true. Um, so yeah, we're kicking off season five. Uh, the referees are w- w- uh, directed <laughs> by Matt Lipsy, produced by Adam Tandy, written by Steve Pemberton and Reese Shearsmith, and it first aired on the third of February, twenty twenty. Apparently, wow, no, really, can't be. Well, I guess I deadline was. If deadline I think I've was just written twenty twenty. I don't think that's true. Uh, is it? Could be. It wasn't this year, was it? Was it? It may well have been. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Man, it's been a long year. It really has. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Back when the world was sort of normal, although I guess things were starting to unravel at that point. Yeah, because was, you were sort of a month or two away from lockdown there. Mm. Bizarre. Um, a simpler time. Man. I don't know what... Is that, that shaking just, you up a bit? <laughs> yeah, it just feels really strange that that was this year. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll give a little synopsis. I think it's my turn, isn't it? Um, I don't know anymore. Probably. I don't know. So, I'll yeah, I'll kick this series of uh, synopses off, and then we know where we're standing. You've been waiting to get a plural of synopsis in for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, it's the final game of the season, and the last time Martin Rutherford will take to the pitch in a long-respected and very professional career as a football referee. There's a lot riding on the game between Rovers and United. United are playing for promotion and Rovers are playing to avoid relegation. A good clean game with plenty of flow and the focus on the football, all played within the laws of the game. There'll be no reason they can't have a fitting, dignified, trouble-free end to the season. But maybe there is a reason why this is a little too much to ask. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you think of this episode? I love this episode. It's brilliant. It's <laughs> so good. Isn't it? it really is. It's such a great start to the series. Um, and the first thing I really like is, and it, you um, sort of brought it up there in the synopsis, was like the vagueness of the team names throughout all of this. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> Rovers, City, and United. <laughs> I love it. There's because I was looking at the shirts as well, and there's when the captains come in. There's Nico from uh, Rovers Football Club. He's got it's RFC on his. It's Rovers Football Club against Football Club. Uh, yeah, Football Club United. FC United of FC United against Rovers Football Club. And I don't know what City. Uh, City FC. It's fine. Just City FC. City Football Club. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great. It's it, it kind of sent me to. Like almost the nostalgia of like things like Sabutio, yeah, and, and um, Roy the Rovers, FIFA, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which Rovers? There Which must Rovers? be Rovers for that. Yeah. Um, it also, I think, it also allows you to put your own rivalry on it, whoever yeah. you would like that to be. Really, it leaves it kind of open. Exactly. Yeah. Who did you? Who did you imagine? It was Manchester's. Manchester's uh, Rovers. There aren't many Rovers, are there? Blackburn. Yeah. Um, Can you think of another Rovers? Rovers. There must be loads of Rovers. My mind's gone blank. Yeah, mine too. I'd... Rovers. <laughs> it's just Roy of the Rovers and Blackburn Rovers. <laughs> Roy yeah. of the is the other Roy, one. Roy of the. <laughs> Royston. Rovers. Royston Rovers. Sound, I think if Royston Vasey had a football team. Royston Rovers. Royston Rovers. That suggests they do some roving, and I feel like the people who um, live in Royston Vasey do anything but rove. True. Bristol Rovers, Doncaster Rovers. Of course. There you go. They could have had like Wanderers County (laughs) uh, Athletic Athletic Football Club. 
Uh, so yeah, this is a it's a, our first football episode. <laughs> yeah, um, with and even including little football jokes that will probably really only be understood by people who follow football fairly closely. Yeah, which I found quite surprising, especially with the vagueness of the team names. Yeah, because that's very vague. But then it goes quite specific. It's one of the things I really love and respect about this episode because it's like it's it knows football, mm. so it's not it's not kind of just having a little funny dig at and uh, to the point where it understands the plight of the referee to a to the, the extent that there's like moments in it with and they're between Steve and Reese as well where it's like they're kind of uh, lamenting the demise of the the authority of yeah, the yeah. football referee and it, there's just something really nice about that feels it feels genuine sports um, entertainment sports <laughs> entertainment they got them wearing all the pinks and the yeah. pink colored jerseys <laughs> he wants to be the man in black <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's quite sweet um so i mean let's start with the name so obviously like the assumption would be the referee's a wanker but I think the, it's up for interpretation. Yeah. Because, I mean, the referee's a winner. That's true. The referee's a bit of a wiener. The referee's a walker. Yeah. The referee's a winker. Wan- wanderer. <laughs> <laughs> That's too many. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of there's lots of words you can fit into that. Um. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A wonder. wonder. A wonder. The referees a wonder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both kinds. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. Yeah, I. I mean, I automatically just went for that's been starred out for profanity reasons, but maybe it is meant to be more vague. Yeah, I think it might be. Okay. Yeah. Because. Mm. And leading on from, and the winner is the referee. That's the answer. And the winner is? I guess the referee's the winner, isn't he? Yeah. Martin. At the end of all this. And that's the thing about this, is that there's a certain amount of interpretation you can put on it, I think, and a certain level of sort of skipping forward a bit to what extent he is responsible for absolutely everything that has happened over yeah. the half hour of this episode, or whether some of it has been happy accidents, um, how much of this was a plan? Yeah, I know it's it's quite difficult to to tell how much of it he could tell he knew was going to play out in the way that it played out, and or was this just was... like some sort of Russian disinformation campaign where you were just sowing mayhem everywhere? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I mean. I, there's the moment where he says you, we can, we can go straight to the FA now and have the game abandoned, um, which I think is his ultimate plan, isn't it? Because that's what happens in the end. It's well, abandoned. yeah, it's, which is weird because that is if you think about every single time you reach the end of a season and people talk about the possible permutations and how things are going to play out, no one ever says that could all kick off into a massive fracas and be abandoned and these people have their points deducted. That's yeah. never in any on anyone's mind of a possibility of how the end of a season is going to play <laughs> out. <laughs> it's true. It's not. We no. can't go into this game depending on that match being abandoned due to a fight. <laughs> yeah, so he has no guarantees that that is a standard, yeah. uh, <laughs> a standard way that this is going to play out. Um, and because even right, with the points being docked you'd think oh there might be a chance it'll be next season rather than yeah. right now um but gary lineker he's having his yeah, say he's, he's into but he is into refugees so don't listen to what he has to malarkey. say <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean let's go i was thinking what's the best way to to approach this and i mean there's two choices really because you it's quite nicely um structured in three acts mm-hmm. um but i thought it might be nice to like look at the characters as well because it's quite the characters are strong in this. yeah they are they're, they're really strong well, actually, yeah they're well written and and structured um so i don't know what do you reckon i go, i think the acts let's go through the acts. let's go the acts i think yeah and we'll bring the characters in as we go yeah 
And that could cause and that could cause us to completely deviate <laughs> from the act. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not having the players distracted by a six foot prawn knocking seven shades of shite out of a whatever it is you are. This is not America, Mitch. I understand. So um yeah, so the first act is what, like the introduction of pretty much the, the team of referees. The um, consummate professional that is Martin. Yeah. Um, is it like Perfectly cast. Yes. Yeah, he's superb. Da- David Morrissey is the he's the man for that role. Um, that, yeah, I don't yeah. think you could have written that for someone better. No, no. Um, and I th- like coming back to the uh, you know how we've looked at sort of themes across the series. Ziz. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's its own plural. I think it's a self plural. Yeah, I know, but people people might you know. It's confusing. Um, the first episode of each series and that claustrophobia, that closeness. Like I found that again with this one mm. in a different way to obviously sardines and Lacachette. Um, but like it's it's there at the beginning, the visceral like experience. You can smell that changing room. Yeah, and you can smell Brendan coming out of that toilet <laughs> <laughs> having dropped his guts. <laughs> I think helped by the way that Reese looks in this episode. Like there's something just a little bit, he's, I don't think he's quite taking full care of himself. No, I don't think so either. I'll give it a minute before you go in there. A few uh, pre-match nerves. Well, it's a big game, isn't it? It is. When I worked at the San Siro, the WC was adjacent to the showers with a separate door and it had a self lowering lavatory seat. You felt pampered. You're already early. What time is it? He's living in 94 at the San Siro. And yeah, his constant references to the San Siro are quite interesting. Obviously, with um, the Italian football match-fixing scandal that went on a few years back. So holding up the San Siro in Italian football is like this bastion of um, how football should be run with the backdrop going on of what is happening here. Yeah. (laughs) Is... um, quite fitting yeah yeah so that's kind of i suppose a seed that's sown into the all of that uh kind of spot betting stuff mm. as well isn't it but, um but i love him he is a nice character he's he's a, such an innocent character um he's, he's very proud of his time in italy even though it was just an under 17s <laughs> exhibition yeah. match thing <laughs> and even now he's the fourth official. Yeah. You know, and it's, um, I don't know what, like when he says it, but like when Phil is complaining about him and, and, uh, Martin's like, he's, he's anonymously competent. Yes. Anonymously and that takes competent. Guts. <laughs> it's like, he hasn't got so, any guts. He's so just he's dropped like, them. Yeah, in. <laughs> he's just left them in there. He's so boring. I love that. He's so boring. And yes, that is a good quality mm. for a referee. I thought we were a team. We are a team, and that includes the fourth official. If we don't respect ourselves, how are we going to get respect from the players? He's so boring, though, Martin. He is boring, yes, and that's a very good quality in a referee. He's anonymously competent, and that takes guts. Brendan hasn't got any guts. He's dropped them all in there. Yeah, yeah as um, Bobby Madeley found out to his unfortunate end. What's that? Um... The referee Bobby Madeley just suddenly disappeared off the scene when it was found that he was. I think he was caught making. Actually, I'm going to double check names before I go any further with this, and this gets broadcast. <laughs> Simon, yes, it was Bobby Madeley. Um, he suddenly decided to relocate due to a change in his personal circumstances. Um, and it turned out that he had recorded the video where he was taking the mickey out of a disabled person. Uh, he sent it to a friend who forwarded it onto his employers, and he was dismissed for it. Oh right, be boring as be a referee, boring. definitely. Because then he ended up refereeing a six-side World Cup final in Crete. <laughs> That's you what go. Bobby maybe does now. <laughs> oh, he's back now. Is he? He is. They are not the story. They don't want to be the story. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Is you should be anonymously competent. anonymous. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what Martin was going for, though, wasn't it? Was that he? 
he knew he could potentially be the story, which is why it was so important that he tried to keep everything he was doing completely on the down low. Yeah. So it couldn't be implied that he had had anything to do with any of it. Yeah, exactly. Because it wasn't out of integrity that he was trying to come across the consummate professional. It wasn't his integrity. It wasn't his legacy. It was him wanting to make sure that it he was couldn't all part be. Of the setup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they couldn't trace it back to him. It's been it's been decades in the making, but <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. I I'd love to know the time scale on this. I don't know how, how long ago he started this relationship with Calvin Cook. I don't know. Yeah. Is is this just been his end game right from the beginning where he decided right i'm going to become a referee to make sure city win the league (laughs) and by the time i retire yeah they'll always be underfunded (laughs) so this is the way to do it (laughs) yeah no i I think it's probably more a little bit more opportunistic than that yeah um in this particular season but yeah and the way that he does all of that set up in the in the early in that first act when he's he's dressed he's first dressed like he, it's an over well, he, an hour before kickoff he needs to be doesn't he because otherwise people will see his back <laughs> yes true <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's there that's why he's there early that's why he's ready early to make sure that no one else sees the massive city till I die tattoo on his back <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, and this, I think that with the names of the teams i think david morrissey had asked for a change because originally I'm, I'm not sure which way round it was um but originally hold on i'm just going to research this so apparently um according to den of geek in the original script the two teams uh we didn't want them to be real teams they had to be fictional we just had city and rovers and the team he supported was united and it had on his back united till i die Morrissey, being a big Liverpool FC fan, said, I'll do it on one condition. I'm not having the ta- that tattoo on my back. <laughs> so we had to change all the teams around to suit him. It was worth it. Worth it to get him. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep him happy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love all the stuff with his, uh, with his synchronizing the watches, getting yeah. all of that right. And it's the moment where I think Brendan... Is talking about how how professional Martin is, and he's doing those those, those little, like the hips gyratory flexes. like hips <laughs> hip flexes and <laughs> throughout just, this scene it is brilliant that he's just in various positions doing stretches. Yeah, like one so bit good. where he's talking to Phil, and it cuts to him just lying on the floor on his side. Yeah, yeah, doing a little leg over stretch. Yeah, I can only imagine that he's just. He's making that up as he goes. Yeah. And it's very difficult for the others not to be in like hysterics. Yeah. Where's he gone? Oh, he's down there. There he is. Ever the consummate professional. Imagine being able to flag Neymar offside. We are not the story, Phil. We are neutral officiators. Never forget that. Yeah, whatever. And of course, Oggy is is the opposite with his vending machine. You know, he's, he's late because he's at the vending machine. Comes in with all of the... Uh, snacks and fizzy drink and all of that he wants to be at the bar by 10 to 5 yeah getting the first round in <laughs> i love how that's rep that represents a sort of a certain type of football fan and a certain type old of- and the old like i think the old school attitude of footballers in general i think yeah, like pre yeah. arsene wenger when everything changed yeah. Football just completely changed at that point. Suddenly, nutritionists were involved. Um, everyone was watching what they were eating. No one was smoking in the changing rooms. <laughs> but I think yes, Oggy, exactly. Oggy is a throwback to that time. Yeah, where they would play horribly hungover from the night before. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's the element in in what he says with that, um, you know, going through the like three o'clock kickoff, three. 46 piss in a pint yeah uh pie not (laughs) piss in a Um, pint (laughs) and uh yeah four four fifty that's final scores and get the first pint in um and there's that the forfeit the the end of the match bit which you see with mitch um once that final whistle goes like it's it's like okay great let's go and have a drink um and the the maelstrom of 
kind of pressure and anger and fury that is just, within that 90 minutes is just released at that yeah, point yeah. for everybody except for Martin. <laughs> yeah. Right, can we synchronise watches, please? We don't have to do that. It's not Mission Impossible. I've got 14.02 and 52 seconds. Uh, six minutes past two. And let's synchronise, please. 56 seconds, 57... Hang on, hang on. I'm going to put this one forward. Was it won't go back. Oh, for God's sake, it's three o'clock kick-off, quarter to four for a pie and a piss, ten to five, final score, and get first round in. It's not rocket science. And there's um, Phil... Yeah, Phil. Who's the, I really like Ralph Little as Phil. He's a great character. He is. He's, he's really, very well played. Very expressive face. Um, just the little cuts to his facial expressions throughout the episode. He's he's very good at that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's sort of preening himself in the mirror, ready for the Qataris <laughs> to come and watch him because yeah. they're scouting him for the World Cup. <laughs> And I really like the. It's at half time when they talk about him rushing to the, rushing to the centre circle to pick up the ball as soon as the whistle, yeah. and then standing there as the steady cam that's a whole circle around him. And I can imagine it just sort <laughs> yeah. of head in the air. <laughs> Absolutely no appreciation for the fact that as a team they have just completely cocked up. Yeah, because <laughs> he's he's not a team player. Um, yeah, it's great, and the thing when Oggy arrives and he he said I saw you on the treadmill run, running backwards. backwards running <laughs> with your Pierre Luigi Kalina face on <laughs> that's I mean that's that's a pretty um deep cut that is yeah Pierre Luigi Kalina jokes <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's yeah. very specific very specific yeah no I, I think that's um that's then what descends do they have a bit of a yeah so one of the great things is the way that they weave plot points into um throughout the kind of dialogue and stuff um and that's where the, yeah the, there's like they're almost like brother the, the linesmen mm. like, they come across as like squabbling brothers don't they like it's got quite a good relationship is this where um, they start squabbling about betting and things no, that's early. Uh, this is earlier. So this is still okay. in the first act um, when Oggy arrives and he's teasing him about running backwards and, and that stuff. And then that leads Martin to like shout, shut up um, and then explains the situation. That's when he says like, if United win today, they get automatic promotion to the Premier League. But it sort of sets the scene of the stakes. So you know then what the stakes are, yeah. Do we know if Sky are showing this in 4K or just in HD? I don't know, can we just... Ah, there you go, what did I tell you, 20 quid. You worried about your ball spot, Phil? Fuck off, Oggy. Can we synchronise watches, please? Hey, I saw you on the treadmill earlier, practising your backwards running. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> it's true, he practises running backwards, doing his Kalina face, so he can get a nice big close-up on TV. No, it's so I can get better peripheral vision. It's better than you chugging up and down like Mr fucking Creosote. Oh, is that right, Mr Creosote? Guys, please! Halvin comes in first. Yeah. Um, and that's where they have their moment. Which, like, because, I mean, the, the, so the, the dialogue and the scripting of this is just like bang, bang, bang. It's so fast and witty and like all these lines that you're kind of trying to keep up with. Um, and so the first time I watched it, when he said, can I kiss you? <laughs> I was watching it and then it took me a second. I was like, what? <laughs> Did I just hear that right? <laughs> it's like it's gone to a place where I really, I, really I wasn't expecting I wasn't this expecting that at all. It's like the ultimate kind of what? Let's do the thing that the audience will least expect. Yeah. At that point, what? What? So that's a twist. There's your twist. Um, yeah. I think it's it's such a massive twist with how attitudes still are in football. Yeah, definitely. That like that's you have a star striker there who's the, also the club captain who is gay and in a relationship but also with a match official. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's breaking some boundaries in terms of a, anything about football. And that's I guess that's why it's a sudden what the hell's just happened here. Well, this has taken a turn. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's why it works well 
with the attention to detail and the fact that it's like, no, these people know football. Mm. Um, so it's not just people setting some storyline in a using a football yeah, yeah. referee's changing room. This to, is intrinsically to about football. Yeah, exactly. And it's very knowing of the those attitudes that you, and the culture that you around it. And exactly, all of that. There might be some tugging in the box, though. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so now, you just got to give us a couple of penalties, right? <sighs> I love whatever cut, but I can't. I'm not even just talking about it. Don't even joke about it. The PGMOL yeah. ever found out. Yeah, yeah, you're retiring. Yeah, but it's my reputation, isn't it? Not to mention the legal consequences. I mean, not just for me, but for the club. Martin, nobody's going to find out. <laughs> Relax. So Calvin Cook is also number nine. Um, so yes, he a, is. It's a different kind of inside number I nine. I think that, that, yeah. Yeah. That's when you realise this isn't dressing room number nine. Because I think that was what I would have been expecting. But we yeah. didn't have... There was no number nine on the way in, was there? No, just the picture of the of Captain Calvin. Cook. Captain yeah. Cook. Yeah. Any links with historical Captain Cook here? I'm sure, we can He's give us some name facts later. Explorer. <laughs> is, that, is that what, as far as you go? You did some exploring. <laughs> right now, I want a good, clean game with plenty of flow and all the focus on the football. Everybody on that pitch knows the laws of the game. And if we stick to that, there's no reason we can't have a fitting, dignified, trouble-free end to the season. Understand? And then you get the score. And then in there, there's baps and abuse being hurled. (laughs) So what has happened? (laughs) They wouldn't have got that at the San Siro because... You know, the, the referee's team get ushered all the way down the tunnel and they have their own espresso machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, yeah, mayhem cool Mayhem has struck because um, Oggy has flagged for a throw-in that definitely should have been because it was 18 inches inside the line. <laughs> a foot and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not great. You've got players showing the officials footage on their mobile phones in the tunnel. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. all just descended. And throwing bacon baps. Yep. Um, <laughs> if you've you got blood on, you know it's sauce. <laughs> and then he has a nice little lick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is... Um, we see that Phil is, um, again, not really the uh, the team player you might need to be um but yeah it's, what was it? oh yeah because they're talking about it, the fact he wears um eyeliner as well uh, linesman minnelli yeah <laughs> butch wilkins in the minute silence for butch wilkins <laughs> <laughs> again such specific um references it's amazing but yeah so i wonder on that um what was it the 26 minute mark how how far from the touchline would Oggy have given a throw in? Yeah. <laughs> what was his limit? <laughs> and this is where I, this is where once we get to the ending that I start to wonder whether Martin was the betting syndicate that approached him. I think he was, yeah. Martin, so Martin has set this up as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, because he just wants to sow chaos. Yeah. And he wants and to I put think, Oggy in a position where he makes a ridiculous decision that's going to start k- things kicking off. Exactly. And he had to f- a first approach Phil, knowing that Phil would turn it down. Um, because Phil is actually the most professional out of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, he's got He's um, got integrity. He may be sort of preening over himself and trying to make a name for himself as on the, on the TV, as yeah. I guess you would. Well, and I, th- I think there's probably a little subtle nod to... You see referees like that. Yeah. I, I Mike Dean think of, wants it to be about him, wants to, want, likes the cameras being there. <laughs> yeah, you can tell where they, they, yeah, they do enjoy it. Um, same in rugby. Um, Steve but, <laughs> uh Yeah, so I, I think he's, fu- he's, he's called, again, the phone is involved and it's really at the heart of um, this episode is, is communication and telephones. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so Phil receives the phone call, offers the bung, he turns it down, but then 
he his suspicions will be raised by the fact that on 26 minutes yes the throw-in's been offered offered given flagged yeah. um and um uh yeah oggy's got this history i mean that that was sown earlier on wasn't it when he was talking about betting on something yeah. and martin cut him down and said no betting no talk of oh betting. you've you've we also missed another um line of dialogue in the first bit um that was about the shorts that brandon had on oh of course yeah are those city pants <laughs> no they're clean on this morning <laughs> 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 so obvious are those city pants brandon no clean on this morning oh city yes well we're away at preston today should be good for a point at least, don't you think? Consolidate playoff place. You know my thoughts about team colours in the changing room. Yes, but it's the last day of the season. What with us being City fans? Take them off, please. Of course. Sorry, Martin. <laughs> um, well, I've no yeah, team still... colours. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, gives you an impression of Brendan, where he might if... have been at one point wearing. Yeah, he's, he's probably because he didn't. He didn't even bat, bat an eyelid about the fact. That, yeah, they could have been shitty yeah. pants. There was no. How dare you even ask me? It was all right. Fair question. No, no, they were clean on this morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, that was so. Actually, um, Brendan supports the same team. Yeah. So actually, he he has just as much reason to buy into some sort of plot, but he's he's not that sort of person, is he? He's. He's the better side of this team. <laughs> yeah, and he's got the... Because he, he's like, he cares. He's wearing his city pants. Um, but it, it's just like, oh, we got Preston away today. See, it's a shame, like, we don't get the funding. Like, we're not really compete. And it's just a, quite a philosophical yeah. fan. Like yeah. A, just a classic fan of a team that doesn't quite do as well as he'd hope who doesn't realize he has the power to <laughs> do this he's, he's about to <laughs> do something remarkable and pull off a miracle <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and so then we move into yeah he, he, brendan also he nods to var doesn't he's yes says, Should that's be why we need var yeah we wouldn't be in this pickle if we <laughs> that's not the that is certainly not the case i can tell you right now <laughs> that that is not the case oh VAR. and then um so calvin enters and then mitch enters and we have a lacochette <laughs> oh, style um chaos scene yeah um, and, and it's weird because martin's like hiding in the toilet like in the toilet area he's hiding around the this is the thing is that he's you would have thought with the way that his character is set up that his initial thing would be just to back his team publicly. And in those conversations in the dressing room, he's standing by his team and saying, any discussion about this will happen after the match when we review it, but this stands now. Yeah. Um, but he's not. He is, you're right, he's cowering in a corner. <laughs> yeah. Because this, and this is the thing with his relationship with Calvin is that at that point, he almost feels like it almost seems like he doesn't want to confront Calvin and he doesn't want to have a stand up row with Calvin. Is that because he genuinely cares? Because I can't figure out whether the whole relationship is a sham as part of this whole plan to destabilize the entire situation or not. Yeah. Because that would, that could be a game he's been playing of trying to get into the head of United star striker all season to, to put him off his game. And this is just sort of the culmination of it all. But on the it's other di- side, it's difficult to tell. Yeah. yeah, he seems to sort of not want to be dragged into it, unless it's because he thinks it'll all suddenly come out, and he doesn't want it to. Yeah, but then by the end of the match, oh well, when he gets news that like City have been will be promoted, it's it's like. It's a terrible day for him. So his his professional whole career is probably going to be defined by this match. He's so he's lost his reputation, all his integrity's gone. His um relationship with his lover is in tatters, if indeed that is a serious relationship. 
Um, and as he says, he might lose his pension. And yet, <laughs> he's delighted. But that's the thing he, <laughs> sa- he says, doesn't he? I did it for love. Yeah. Um, and at that point, you're not sure which the love is. Or maybe the inside number nine is a reference to the fact that he's inside his head and he's been messing with him and this is what he's caused to happen because oh, all yeah, of this is what then culminated in Calvin punching <laughs> um, Phil yeah. in the face. <laughs> yeah, which leads to that great <laughs> After Reese has had his trousers pulled <laughs> <down>. <laughs> That was just the chaos scene, wasn't it? <laughs> Suddenly his trousers are around his ankles. And he's, it's when he's, he's holding his crotch explaining <laughs> Law 12. <laughs> I was like, well, this guy knows his onions as he's holding his onions. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You're off. You're out the game. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's half time. Of course he can. Brendan, tell him. Law 12. The referee has the authority to take disciplinary action from entering the field of play for the pre-match inspections and leaving the field of play at the end of the match. This is a conspiracy. You should be whipped. Go on, you! Martin, you can't. If I meant to show him the yellow card, I can change my mind, can't I? You've already booked him once, Martin. It's a dismissal either way. No, I want him red-carded. Violent conduct. Yeah? Well, it's nothing to do with you, is it, Norbert? Get him out of here! Come on, get my head! It's such a good scene. <laughs> and like, so yeah, that's after he's been, Martin's blowing his whistle, holding the red card up. Which and seemed to be quite an instinctive move. He yeah. did it straight off, didn't he? Yeah. And, and then looked as though he regretted it and then tried to suggest he was backpedaling. But at the same time, I'm getting the impression it was all fairly premeditated. Because he knew <clears throat> either way, because Calvin had already been yellow carded, he's going to get a red card. So he can make himself look a little less kind mm. of like a bad guy in front of Calvin by saying, well, if I meant to... Because um, there was every card. chance he had, he had decided already he was going to send him off at some point in the game. Exactly. But then this yeah. all erupted and the opportunity presented itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then that leads to all the stuff coming out um calvin <laughs> phil's this is when phil's face is particularly good when he's just sort of stood there with his nose bleeding just aghast yeah. of what's coming out here <laughs> and then he's it's the way he says martin <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like he's decided no i am gonna i'm gonna ask about this like is this and then yeah martin shuts him down I've um I've met Ralph Little. Have you? He was drinking up at Twisted Barrel uh, right. one night when he was filming something, and I helped him get out of the door because the big door wouldn't open for him, and he was trying to push it, but you had to pull it. <laughs> well, there you go. I've just remembered. <laughs> okay. That was a funny. Did he thing. give you? Did he give you a good look? No, don't think yeah. so. He seemed appreciative of the fact that I just let him out. Did he run backwards off? <laughs> with a Kalina face <laughs> just glaring <laughs> uh, yeah I'll put all that in the report or just put number nine cook dismissed for violent cook Martin Don't. Because Mitch is, he's probably like kicking off as well as the, whatever he is, mascot. What, yeah. And then it's when he says, he's on his way out, like he's been ordered out by Martin. He's, he says, get my head. And Brendan <laughs> has to pick, and the way he picks up his head and wanders out, it's just, <laughs> he's just that, I don't know, he, he plays just a fairly pathetic. Oh, he's very earnest. For whatever yeah. needs to happen. There. And then... Just, yeah, he's just doing what needs to be done. And then he's back in the room. He says, um, so I'll uh, write that yeah. up in the match report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, just write. Number nine, Cook. Dismissed for violent conduct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, and then then we get into the um, conversation about. So with Phil Martin asks him, "Did you report the approach to the FA?" Um, knowing that he wouldn't have. Yeah. Um, he says it would ruin his chance of the World Cup, which is interesting. So it's like, what would ruin his chance of the World Cup? Would it be dobbing in the Qatari betting syndicate because they've got so much power at the World Cup, they're probably going to be able to have some sway in terms of who is able to come and referee? Or does it tarnish his reputation for for some reason? Yeah, I'd, Just, I'd struggle with that because you'd have thought that would be the professional thing to do. Exactly. The sort of person they'd want there is exactly. someone who says, no, I'm not going to take your bet and I'm going to go and tell people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think it would have actually, it would have, it must be that he feels like the Qataris would have some sway. Yeah. So he's, he is the utmost professional, but at the same time, he, he knows what he needs to do in order to get mm-hmm. to where he wants to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess he, he sees himself as being fairly clean from the point of view of he refused it. Done. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. clean. I'm out. It doesn't yeah. matter. Do you think he's got ambitions to become a referee or he's just quite happy running the line? It's interesting that he, at the beginning of the episode, he makes that point of saying what you, you see the assistants as being below you. I mean, the fact they're called the referee's assistants yeah. suggests, yes. <laughs> like the, the clue is in the name. Um, so I think he probably does. We better get back out there. Crowd are going to give you some stink, Martin. Oh, that's not that I can't. Yeah, come on. Let's get out there and restore some sanity. So yeah, Act Two finishes with another great line, gentlemen. Let's get out there and restore some sanity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it flicks Before, up. Before yeah. <laughs> 5.42pm, United won, Rovers won, match abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the uh, the use of other things to sort of give the plot is is the radio here, where you have Mark Chapman and Alistair Bruce Ball, who is Eamon Travers um, on the radio. I don't know why it's not... Why isn't Alistair, Alistair Bruce Ball? I don't know. Because he's Mark a thing, Chapman isn't he? Says, yeah, he is. Uh, we go to Eamon Travers, who's there. Oh. Um, and then he says, yeah, there's there's allegations of match fixing, collusion with the officials, and a personal relationship between a key player. How is, is this all United Mitch? Team. Has Mitch leaked all this? Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be someone from inside the dressing room, really, unless it all comes out yeah. when it descends into chaos because there's the mass brawl on the pitch and five red cards <laughs> after he gave a penalty... <laughs> For that goalkeeper handballing it and then ordered ordered it to be retaken three times until it was scored. He didn't realise it was the didn't realise it was the goalkeeper. It was the guy in the bright red shirt was flying towards the ball like Superman. I think even Arsene Wenger would have spotted that. There's yeah. another joke. There's another very specific joke. Exactly. Yeah. And so uh the press are having a field day. Even Robbie Savage. Robbie Savage tearing us to shreds. Even had a go at Phil's hair. <laughs> Pop calling the kettle black. Um, <laughs> nice little dig at Robbie. And Phil actually doing his eyeshadow. No, sorry, yeah. eyeliner. Yeah. He does He does use eyeliner. <laughs> he does use it. He does. Um, and then there's a great little conversation um, between, is it Brendan? Well, I think it's Brendan and Phil, isn't it? Um when he asks about how Martin is. Oh, is it Oggy comes in, asks about how Martin is, and he says he's shaken but philosophical. And then Phil says he's the Lance Armstrong of referees. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's fucked, fucked himself. himself. <laughs> and then Brendan's like, not anatomically or professionally. <laughs> How's Martin? He's shaken but philosophical. I think he's aware of his legacy is somewhat tarnished. Somewhat? He's the Lance Armstrong of football referees. He's fucked himself. Not anatomically. Or professionally. Well, we all stick together. He can't be blamed for them players fighting like that. Brendan. 
He gave a penalty for a handball against the goalkeeper. What? He didn't know it was the keeper, did he? What, the one in the big bright red shirt with gloves on, leaping through the air like Superman? Oggy's been with Howard and the police. I assume that's Howard Webb. Oh, He's the referee's yeah. guy. Yeah. So it's become a criminal matter now, which it would. I mean, yeah, Martin, say what you like about Martin, but he's willing to put it all on the line. <laughs> he's, he's risked a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, he's he's very philosophical and calm when he comes out. Um, and it's yeah, he's just pretty chilled out about it. And the way that they all say goodbye, and it's like, yeah, it's it's been good working for, with you, and good luck with everything. <laughs> it's like everything's calmed down very quickly. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? The pressure cooker's been released. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Twelve minutes early. Yeah, game's done. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So he goes and finds the retirement card that Calvin handed him at the beginning, and it opens it. And you're thinking, is that going to be just from Calvin? Some, maybe <laughs> is this some Chekhov's gun? Yeah, thing. No. <laughs> and it's like it is nothing. It's literally it just what it was. Yeah, what he said it was. And then Mitch comes for a chat. Yeah. And there's some <laughs> cracking lines in here. <laughs> yeah. And that you say he apologizes for things he might have said in the heat of the moment at half time. <laughs> and now the pressure cooker's off. He's and he t- actually, totally changed. But he actually can't help himself. He comes out with things that are awful <laughs> without <laughs> realizing it. Yeah. You should um probably use the back entrance. <laughs> Exit. <laughs> Exit. 150 million pounds right up the shitter no, <laughs> no offense, offense. <laughs> then he's also said he he doesn't believe a word of it yeah yeah but he's i mean i think he's just saying that yeah. <laughs> i think he believes every word of it yeah he comes out with that classic cliche thing of uh we get carried away about 22 blokes chasing a pig's, pig's bladder, bladder around a field, field. Yeah. and then and then, yeah, that's when Martin's like, never, we should never apologize for passion. Yeah, that's what's, what it's all about, having the passion. Yeah, I like Mitch. <laughs> I think he, he gels into the, I think that, I mean, the whole cast works really well. Mm-hmm. Very m- male dominated. Yeah, it is. In fact, <laughs> I, mean, have we, I don't think I've male. seen an episode quite like this that is completely men. Yeah. No, I can't think of another one. I could be wrong. I don't. Uh, no, but I guess that's nice. what happens when you set it inside a male dressing room. Yeah. And it uh, and it is, uh, I think, one of the themes of the episode itself is kind of almost masculinity. And yeah, it is, yeah. Different aspects of it and the way that it plays out. And yeah, professionalism, control, all of that stuff. Love of your football club above everything else, including your professional reput- rep- um, reputation, your integrity. <laughs> exactly. For something that is going to be fleeting because they're going to get relegated next season. And that's the thing, isn't it? Is that <laughs> it's like that thing, um, that David Mitchell bit from Mitchell and Webb look where he's just, he's doing the Sky Sports football, football, football. We'll, <laughs> we'll play football, football to determine the victors. For this season, at least, <laughs> yeah. and it is everything. Everything is such high pressure for something that, come a couple of months' time, it's no gone. No one ever wins fully. No one ever. Wins no one will ever win football. the football. <laughs> <laughs> won the football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what makes it so just absurd. And th- I like that Bill Shankly quote at the beginning, where, uh, which is what. Some, Some people describe football as a matter of life and death. I think that's a ridiculous attitude. Yeah. It's far more important than that. Yeah. And I think, as absurd as that sounds, like there's a lot of truth in that because it is more important than life and death because it... It goes on. It, it keeps goes going. It goes on. Exactly. It outlives it, everyone. <laughs> precisely. And, it, and it's culturally important. It's important for society where this is a part of the way that your community works and all well, that. Well, as we stuff. were told this week by an MP from the North, <laughs> they like their football up there. They don't like things like ballet and shows. 
to paraphrase him. I missed that. <laughs> Did you? Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> but no, you're right. It does it does serve far more of a function than just watching 22 guys kicking a pig's bladder around a field. Um, and I think you've seen a lot of that with fans not being able to go into grounds. And it's weird that this was shown quite so close to the point where football did shut down. And mm. it, all of this at the, from, from that point, almost when that episode was shown to now, we haven't had any of these situations. We haven't had mm. any of these situations where a referee has been shouted at that he's a wanker from the stands um, for months. Yeah. Months on end. And that's really that's odd. True. Yeah. Yeah, it must be a nice reprieve for referees right now. Yeah. And yeah. I, I imagine they're having a... Because the, they get shouted out by everyone. As as uh, Oggy says, you know, the, we get treated like shit week in, week out, spat out by so-called fans, abused by players, managers, and then the pundits weigh in and suddenly your kids are getting bullied at school. And it's like... <laughs> There's something really like that. That's true. The life of a referee. Who would want to be a referee? Because, and I think that you're right, that not only are they not having the hassle from the fans, there are no fans for players to play up to, to quite the same extent either. And everything is just a bit more relaxed, I guess. It feels to everyone like it's just a training game, which is why it's all been a bit mental, I think, (laughs) for the last few months with scores and results that you wouldn't have imagined <laughs> exactly yeah yeah so um mitch's character um what is he gopher prairie dog chipmunk some, some sort of rodent <laughs> <laughs> i love the uh, oh brendan when he says oh, I thought it was a tadpole. Never really sat right with me. <laughs> it's like tadpole. Tadpole. <laughs> some, some fantastic reference. It's like it's definitely not a tadpole. Yeah. <laughs> if I was really to describe him right as the me. opposite of something, I think it would be the opposite of a tadpole. <laughs> tadpole. I was wondering if it's a tadpole. <laughs> yeah, poor Brendan. He's not all there, is he? <laughs> <laughs> He's not. <laughs> oh, but it turns out that even Mitch doesn't know what he is. Mitch the fucking meerkat keeps on showing everyone the footage on his phone. What do you mean, meerkat? Is he an otter? How could he be an otter? Otters are muscle into with tiny ears. All right, David fucking Attenborough. I always thought he was a tadpole, but it never sat right with me. It'll blow over. Oh, yes, I don't think Mitch knows what he is. No, I mean the throw-in. I really like the, the, um, the tattoo reveal and the shot in the mirror of just ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really good. <laughs> I mean, it's a happy ending, really, isn't it? I guess so. I guess, yeah, you couldn't it's really say chaos, that. It's chaos, but it's... It is chaos, and you can't really say that anything dark has particularly happened to anyone. No, no one's come out of this particularly badly. The person who's come out of it worst is him, and he's happy with that, so... He's, he's set it up in order to come out badly. Yeah, exactly. He's Yeah, he's got what he wanted out of this. Unless his hope was, but was his hope that he would be able to sort of fly under the radar here and sow the chaos and not suffer the, ideally there would have been a nice easy penalty to give. Ideally he wouldn't have had to have gone looking for a penalty where he had to first of all give it for a goalkeeper handballing it and then have it retaken three times before it went in. (laughs) Those are the bits that kind of undermine the professionalism that you those yeah <laughs> that's out of his control yeah he didn't take that penalty those penalties i feel he like would've... with another 15 minutes to play he could have probably gambled on there being a better opportunity to give a penalty mm. you'd have thought you'd have thought with a team who were going for it to win the league that they would have had another attack at some point yeah. in the last 15 minutes without having to resort to goalkeeper handball that's true <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is he very panicked. True. Yeah, yeah. I wonder whether he'd he would have wanted the game abandoned at half time when it came out that when Oggy admitted to it. But he, he did put that as an option, didn't he? But the thing is, there though, that I don't think that the, there wouldn't have been the points deduction, would there? 
it had to That's get to true. the point yeah, where point. United yeah. weren't controlling their players. Yeah. To the extent good that there was going to be a points deduction for So he need and he needed, he needed mayhem. So he needed Calvin to kick off. But I guess that's why awarding the penalty, he had to award it for something outrageous for, oh, for yeah, the mayhem. Exactly, yeah. It had to be that bad, I guess. So actually, it was a, I'm going to sacrifice everything. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. For, yeah. It's much more than life and death for him. <laughs> They're going to get relegated next season. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have facilities. <laughs> They're not playing at the San Zero. Oh, no, AC Milan. <laughs> have an espresso machine. <laughs> yeah, no, that's um, interesting. So he's just sacrificed everything, everything for his team. Yeah, and we don't we don't know whether we don't know whether he sacrificed a relationship or not. No, because we don't know whether that was all just part of the manipulation. Whether plan. he started a relate. I mean, if he's that much of a City fan, the idea of dating the star player of United seems a bit... That is true, yeah. Yeah, it must be you set know. up. What a horrible man. Yeah, he is a horrible man. <laughs> what a, what a bastard. <laughs> a very shallow man. <laughs> He's just Rutherford. playing with people's Not lives. Not Mike Rutherford. He's someone yeah. else. <laughs> Not Mike Rutherford. Mike and the mechanics. He is, yeah. <laughs> He, I think he's quite a nice guy. He seems he's a good songwriter. He is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, anything else to kind of draw attention to? I don't think so. It's really, I really, really like this episode. Me too. It's, um, I was surprised. I don't know why. I don't know how much Stephen Reese follow football and enjoy football. Have you got anything there? I don't know. No, I'm assuming I, quite a bit. Unless they they're hiring some people to insert football jokes. I mean, they don't strike me as massive football fans, but... No. You know, I've, I'm always surprised by some people who are. So, yeah. They're either massively into football or they have a good team of researchers around them. Because they've done a good job here. They have. Yeah. Very good job. The the sort of references in there are the sorts of things that you you just know about. You can't research the fact that no. Arsene Wenger doesn't know, has never seen any incident happen in his life. No, right? exactly. and the script is just, it's just full of those references as well. It's yeah. like without them, they wouldn't have writ- really written a whole lot of stuff. No. Um, so they must be. They must know. Well, they've yeah. hired some football fan interns <laughs> for this yeah. episode. <laughs> you just write this Locked episode. them in a room. Write football jokes. Basically, the the arc of the episode is we want chaos mm-hmm. uh, and we want that to be realistic but extreme. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> see, you see you at five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Get the first point. Then. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it says, um, we didn't actually speak to any referees, but there's great podcasts and websites you can look at and interviews you can find. So we did a lot of research for that one. The referees changing room is a space that probably most of us don't think about very often, but it just struck us as a really interesting idea to set an episode there. Hmm. It's re- it's very useful with Inside Number 9 to have a preordained structure. So the idea of before the game, halftime, and then after the game gave you a really good structure for an episode and they felt really exciting. It was a very different Number 9 to be inside. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. I, th- I imagine that structure came very early on. You yeah, think three parts. If we set it there, yeah, we can build from there. Cool. Well, it's been a pleasure to uh, to speak about this one. I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, so if anybody else has any thoughts on this, any reactions, any things you've particularly enjoyed in this episode, please do drop us an email at quietnightinside09 at gmail.com or uh, get in touch via Twitter at AQNIN9. If you want to leave a re- nice review on Apple Podcasts, that is very welcome as well. That'd be much appreciated. So, 
Yeah, I don't think I've got anything more to say. Have you got anything more to say, Steve? I don't think so. Great. Well, we'll uh, bid you good night and uh, or good day, good morning, whenever you're listening to this. Cause good afternoon, good podcast. evening, and good night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Take care. Have a good week. Goodbye. Bye bye. Well, Mitch, can I ask you a question? Yeah. yeah. What creature are you? <laughs> what this? Yeah, absolutely no idea. <laughs> no. I know. I I look alright to see you next Tuesday, isn't it? but uh, yeah. You do anything for your club, don't you? I suppose you do, yeah. <laughs>